Hey, it's Nick Zangle. Welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to talk about the controversies, plural, around the D'Amelio family, in particular two members of the family, Dixie and Charlie, the sisters, and what's been going on. So I think I finally have my finger on why people are so up in arms about these two girls, and we're going to talk about that right now. But before we move on, if you like social, political, and cultural commentary throughout every week, make sure to subscribe to this channel wherever you're watching, whether you are on Rumble or on YouTube. So let's get right into it. So I was holding off on commenting about this Charlie and Dixie, the first controversy, because it was a lot of recent drama between them and James Charles and Trisha Paytas, Trisha Paytas, 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 and... To me, that was kind of petty and messy, that whole situation. But it did bring up, a, it kind of plant the seed in my head about these two girls and kind of putting two words and putting out there kind of some of the things I've been thinking that I didn't really feel necessary to talk about until now. And the thing that really kind of put things into perspective about these sisters that blew up on TikTok, if you haven't heard of them before, and are now kind of taking over the YouTube world and other social media platforms is a video that was released a few days ago and it was an episode of what is called the early late show with dixie d'amelio it's basically her a segment she does of videos on her channel on youtube and it was a christmas episode which was sponsored by hollister who from what i gather from the episode the d'amelio, d'amelio sisters designed their own pajama set for hollister and this was kind of a promotional Thing for them but that was basically the gist of the, the video which i'll talk about in a few seconds and this video was very popular it was showing up on trending page and on youtube recommendations to basically anybody and the comment section was pretty ruthless which i'll touch on kind of the consensus from the comments later but it appears i'm not the only one who thinks what i'm thinking right now and i'm trying to put it in a nicer way than some of the comments so that's kind of my thing i try not to be too mean i try to be constructive and kind of try to find all sides that i can possibly find to make sure I'm, I'm coming to good conclusions but i think this video is kind of an indication of why people are hating on them so much recently due to the first controversy which is very very recent even before this so i want to back up to that first controversy and briefly explain what happened there and why it is important to this new video and why i feel the way i feel so the first controversy was in regards to a video that the that the Emilio family posted on their youtube channel meaning the whole family where they had a dinner guest over who was James Charles, who is a makeup guru on YouTube. He is one of the biggest gurus, happens to be involved in drama with Tati, the beauty channel, who's involved with the drama with Katie Joy from Without a Crystal Ball, who I made a video on a few days ago, or actually a week ago at this point. And so uh, James Charles was the guest, and Charlie and Dixie were basically hosting this episode of the dinner, with the D'Amelios and they were there with their parents so Charlie and Dixie's parents were also guests at the dinner table and they hired a chef to make them fancy meals and so but the controversy that came out of that video initially which to me was kind of a non-controversial controversial ish was one Dixie the 19 year old older sister was picking her nose apparently and people took screenshots and were like ew that's gross she spit out some food which now we're seeing allegedly that her team actually set it up so that they would make food for Dixie that she would kind of spit out to kind of create some drama, which is not far-fetched at all. Because if you have seen any truth videos about reality TV and things that are supposed to be real on TV and online, a lot of it is heavily produced and situationally set up to cause conflict and drama for entertainment purposes. So I actually believe that one. Whether it's true or not, or if it was just a cover, I don't know. But um, people thought those were two kind of rude things that Dixie was doing. Now, as far as Charlie, who is the younger sister, who is 16, she made a comment uh, during the dinner about how it would be cool a year after hitting 1 million followers on TikTok to one year later hit 100 million followers on TikTok. And James Charles jokingly said, well, was the first 90... F- or, or she's at 95 during the dinner and she wanted to hit 100 by the end of the week or whatever. And James was like, well, was the first 95 million not enough for you? In a joking, sarcastic, like, this is a stupid comment to Charlie. Like, why are you so worried about five more billion people? You have 95 billion. And it, 
people took that and kind of ran with it as she wasn't grateful for the 95 plus million she already had and she was just looking at her followers as a number and it was just about the numbers and blah 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 and so that was kind of the controversy of that dinner and so to me that dinner besides the throwing up and the or the spitting out the food and the, the nose picking and the comment by charlie to me it came off as more of a more of a childish like home video type situation between it which it didn't appear they they weren't acting like 16 and 19 year olds in my opinion and it came off more as like a home video as a kid that's cute but not something you'd want posted for everyone to see on the internet it's more of one of those videos that your parents show your future girlfriend or boyfriend when they are first meeting you and they want to embarrass embarrass you in front of them to kind of prove that maybe they love you and they they think you're cute or whatever and to kind of poke fun at you to me that is what this video looked like which hey maybe that was what they were going for i don't know but once the the puking and the spitting out food and the nose picking and the comment by Charlie happened, they kind of were wrapping up the the video and the way they did it was kind of like a like a like a three year old kind of hamming it up for the camera like this is the the, the whatever the whatever show and blah, blah blah show and and like trying to like be cutesy and relatable I guess but it just didn't come off to me very much or very um very relatable or just kind of seemed fake in my opinion so now we get to the recent video that was the christmas hollister ad video is what i'm calling it where they seemed even more uninterested and almost as if they just made the video for the sponsorship just to grab the money whatever they were getting paid to make it um, and i feel that came off more as they and actually was proof that maybe what charlie said about the number of followers and the fact that she may be taking or not appreciative of the number of followers she has and she kind of looks at it as a number to me that video on youtube which is for her 10 nearly 10 million or the 10 million subscribers they almost have combined they have almost 20. Um, to me that was more of proof that they are taking advantage or not appreciative of the following that they've gained so quickly and that video made it appear that they they feel or they're showing that they're at a place where they don't really have to do much to kind of make money or to to have this career and they appear to take their audience for granted because they didn't put much work in that video i mean that was pretty bare minimum video even for like tiktoker standards um not that tiktokers are bad all bad but this the the standard that set that video set for them or the image that it put out was that they basically can do almost nothing and have a career and make millions of dollars and 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 whatnot so it gave off the impression that they didn't really have to work for their followers or they don't have to work to keep them or work for the sponsorship or whatnot or give some unique perspective or content on it so i think the, the coupling of those two videos together if you watch just those two you'd be like what the heck so this in my opinion is why charlie's comments in the dinner video were about the follower account were received poorly uh, by the audience and it seems that people were kind of are almost resentful of Charlie and, and Dixie and their family and a lot of these TikTokers for getting their following really quickly. I mean, Charlie's following is like crazy quick and it might be showing that they may not appreciate it very much and have maybe haven't been held accountable to a lot of, a lot of things they're doing or they maybe haven't had a big controversy yet from their following because they're still so new. And so um, so people, in my opinion, this is kind of like my theory of what, what, why people were unfollowing Charlie in mass after that comment. And to me, it's because people were actually, in my opinion, looking for a reason to not follow them because maybe subconsciously they knew, as far as the followers go, knew that these people, Charlie and Dixie and the like, weren't all they are cracked up to be or didn't have much to offer other than being like time filling videos, especially this year in a pandemic when people were um, had a little more free time on their hands and they couldn't really do much outside the home or outside their phone with it. And so my theory is that they were kind of products of perfect timing on social media and are almost the like poster children for this rubber band effect we've seen where social media got so fake and overly filtered, over, overly face tuned, all this fakery, fake lifestyle, fake body, fake face, fake personalities, fake 
followings, whatever it may be. And they were kind of the antithesis to that or the complete opposite of that. And were kind of the young younger girls that were kind of, they weren't, quote unquote, weren't like the other girls' girls, if that makes sense. Meaning Dixie, um, the older one, has, she's 19, but she comes off, she has like a, a deeper voice, kind of like a tomboyish voice. And then the younger one, Charlie, is a little more minimalistic, um, has been touted in, in some of the research, research I've seen as kind of a minimalistic, simple person, which is why people like her, because she's kind of a normal girl. And to me, I think we're now seeing the rubber band the fact the other way, which is that we're seeing the repercussions of the perfect timing without substance. So they were kind of the product of perfect timing, filling the space with whatever, but not with substance, if that makes sense. So to me, it'd be one thing if the areas that these girls and people like them were lacking in, as far as if you, I'll, I'll mention what those things are, um, and could be made up in other areas, meaning personality or looks or brains, whatever it may be. And before I get into the next part about like substance and the parts of that they're kind of missing, I hesitate to bash anyone for being too boring or reserved of a demeanor because I was that way when I was younger. I also hesitate to bash anyone for trying too hard for having a personality because that's kind of that's what we want out of them because we're saying that they're too boring, these girls. So to me, it's another instance of you just can't win in general if you're just not being yourself. So that I just want to preface this whole next part of the video with that. But um, now I want to kind of get into the substance argument. So it would be one thing if, let's say they were boring and didn't have talent but they had or didn't have talent but they had brains or they didn't have brains but they had talent or they had looks or whatever it may be and they made up for whatever they're lacking in some areas with another area and that's why people like or like or follow them um but at this point it's kind of getting hard to find because and hey by the way i want to say too i know everyone likes something that other people don't like so this i could be completely off base here but from what i've seen over the years following celebrity and and Hollywood culture, you have to have one of three things to kind of make it without being labeled this famous for being famous person. Even people with who have these get labeled that. But to me, you have to have one of three things or a combination of these. And it's you either have to have looks, brains, or personality. That to me is like the three, the combination. If you have looks, brains, and personality, then you're like, you're golden. But in my opinion, <laughs> brains and personality, I don't think are there with these girls, at least not yet. And from what I've seen reported about Charlie, and obviously they'll apply that to her sister because they have similar vibes in that way. They are being praised for their minimalistic look, I'm not saying they're ugly or anything by any, any standpoint because that's all subjective. But normally you would indicate that you have something else people know you for. And so in this case, they got famous for being minimalistic and doing the dancing videos on TikTok. But at some point you grow up and those dancing videos don't make sense. And if you don't have a brain or personalities to back up whatever you initially got famous for, then it's gonna be hard to kind of have a long career. The perfect example of this is what I think of when I think of the Kardashians. While initially people were like, well, why are they? Why is Kim Kardashian famous? She's hanging out with Paris Hilton. She has a sex tape. That's kind of eh. But they parlayed that into a reality show where we got to know them as people, we got to know the family dynamic, and it was interesting to see kind of a normal family, big family kind of have the, the normal problems and things and get on each other's nerves and the different personality types in the family. And so that to me is why see people like the Kardashians who were, and basically still are being touted as famous for being famous, have turned that initial thing into a, re a successful reality show which spawned businesses which spawned social media fame and now we see kim kardashian trying to be a lawyer and we see all these other businesses if you didn't have any skill in some way that you probably wouldn't have now going back to the d'amelios almost every comment i saw like pretty much every comment in the christmas video the hollister ad video was like why is this in my recommendation why did i watch this this is so boring i don't know how these people are famous blah 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 blah. and i think the only other comment i really saw varying from that was telling people to stop watching because if it's too boring why are you watching so the comment section was a mess even though they had a lot of likes relative to dislikes but the comment section was just 
must have hit a, a new like wave of people, the initial wave of fans, and then a new wave of people. I don't know, but um, I agree. It, it was boring, and that's coming from someone who has been called boring, someone that I know I'm not the most outgoing person, but I, at least I know I can fall back on my brains. And I, I mean, I outside of YouTube and outside of some topics you've probably seen on my channel, I have a personality. I mean, I can be a chameleon when I need to be and be a little more outgoing when I need to be, but um, it's, it's usually a choice. I can, I can choose to be a little more outgoing than not, and I can read the room and read the temperature of whatever topic I'm talking about. For instance, my last two videos, I've had majority comments, overwhelming majority like me what I'm doing, even though I took a very straight, unemotional, factual, not very dramatic, emotional approach to those videos. But the people who like that type of video liked it. Whereas the people who like this kind of over dramatic, over whatever thing that really isn't my personality, they didn't really like those videos. And so uh, maybe that person, if they gave my channel a chance, or this one, or future video, future topics, maybe they'd feel differently because I'm choosing a little different approach to certain topics depending on the circumstances around that that video so um, last thing i want to touch on with this is another comment of regarding who people watch why people watch people and i think there is trends on online and there is just a kind of a wave or tides turn often kind of like every day the waves come in and there's high tide and low tide and to me sometimes i want to watch someone who's like me, has the same personality as me. Sometimes I want to watch someone with the opposite personality as me, and sometimes I want to watch someone kind of in the middle. It just kind of depends on the day, the time of day, my mood, what time of year it is, what's happening in my life. And so we could just be seeing the result of that happening to the D'Amelios right now, and we could just be in a season of people kind of not wanting to see kind of a bratty appearing to be money grab and unappreciative display of a behavior online so especially from people who are so so famous at this point and have such a large following i think people are kind of starting to hold these people accountable for their actions and popping bursting their bubble just a little bit now so let's wrap this up here uh, let me know what you think in the comment section about any of the scandal whether it's the trisha james charles the d'amelios the dinner video or the christmas video have you watched either one and what do you think let me know in the comment section. And if you liked what you saw here, make sure to give this video a thumbs up or a like, whatever you do to show your like for a video on whatever platform you're watching on. And like I said at the beginning of this video, make sure to subscribe if you would like weekly videos on social, political, and cultural topics. And with that said, I will talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.